This is Eyewitness News with live breaking news. We begin with breaking news right now. Pursuit of the stolen big rig. I'm Colleen Sullivan. And I'm Ellen Leba. As you can see, this big rig is going very, very slow. This is the southbound five freeway. Started in Kern County, and this is a stolen uh, cab of a big rig. It's a very strange pursuit we've been watching, Colleen, because it's going extremely slow. It's almost like you could run as fast as that truck is going. But uh, we know that it started in Kern County. It's been going southbound on the five at the 138 to the grapevine. He turned around, and now he's, as we said, he's still southbound on the five right now but no, showing no signs of pulling over though. No, but it looks like he's about to change lanes. We're, we're not exactly sure why this suspect is leading uh, the CHP on this very slow speed pursuit. We're looking at Air 7 HD and it does give the mileage and it's showing about 14 miles per hour. That was at its top speed just a moment ago because it is slowing down. You can see the CHP right there taking a very somewhat gentle approach. I don't even know how they would pull one of these over, Ellen, if they'd ever try a pit maneuver because the, their cruisers are are not are kind of no competition beefy wise compared to these uh, cabs. Yeah, but earlier they did try an unsuccessful spike strip and right now he's about two miles north of Templin Highway. Who knows? I think uh, I don't know the pit manure like you said, Colleen, I can't imagine that, but a spike strip certainly would do the job and yes. as slow as he's going, they certainly have plenty of time to uh, put it into place. Yeah, it looks like, I don't know how many wheels are on this thing, but maybe about 12, maybe 10, but uh, 10 to 12 wheels are on there. You'd certainly need a pretty big spike strip to uh, penetrate uh, enough of those tires so it would render it inoperable. But again, you can see this has got to be causing such an absolute pain for the drivers behind um, this because we know the grapevine is really, it's one of those main arteries through California from Northern California to Southern California. But you can see the driver kind of Going, I think they're like they have some paper in their Maybe hand. Maybe he wants shuffling the helicopter around. to see it. Oh, I think. Oh, yeah, he's pointing. pointing to the helicopter. Let's. Is see he if pointing we can to the helicopter that. or the CHP? I think the helicopter. And you could. What does it say he's, though? I wish he could see. He wants us to zoom in, but it's not always the wisest idea for us to. Who knows if there's any sort of profanity? We certainly apologize in advance, but we don't see what what this person is trying to show through their uh, windshield, but clearly they wanted us to see some sort of message and we're not seeing it. Yeah, that wasn't not, successful. And we're not quite sure how this originated. Like what what alerted authorities to start chasing this uh, big rig? Yeah, we so far don't have much information except that it did start um, in Kern County, but other than that, you wonder how much gas he has too. We've never really seen a pursuit of a a cab of a big rig before, I don't think, at least not in recent memory, and especially going as slow as he is going. Yeah, we're, we are getting some um, some news that is kind of trickling in right now. We are finding out that Kern County reported this as a stolen big rig. So yeah. um, you have to be, so maybe you already said that, I just didn't hear it, Ellen, but it, it is starting out as a report of a stolen big rig. We don't, one would assume that you would try to steal a big rig if they had merchandise, but this doesn't have any sort of merchandise. It's just the cab. Yeah, he's still there in as you could see there as he's driving, still um, holding those papers, and I think he just put them down and obviously wants to have a message. You don't, we don't know if he's in communication with the CHP or officers or anybody for that matter, but it would be interesting to see what he has in mind and what what is he wanting. Yeah, because it's, you know, oh, these, there he goes with more paper. So these big rigs are people's, you know, my, my little brother is a big rig driver and these these cabs are very expensive and very hard to, um, you know, get loans for these cars and they're they're just so expensive. So I do feel sorry for who, who the person who owns this big rig. You're probably watching it as if, you know, your 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 livelihood right there is on the line and you just certainly at least you see this person not making erratic moves or kind of crashing it and driving it slowly. But still, it's it's got to be very nerve wracking for the owner because they are obviously need to pick up a shipment and transport it or they were dropping off something. You just never know what would lead someone to try to steal one of these um, vehicles. Yep, he's writing another note as you can see that you get some almost like a magic marker. I mean a, a Sharpie pen perhaps on that piece of paper as he goes south on the five freeway uh, near the Templin Highway exit, but it doesn't look like he's going to attempt to get off this freeway. He looks like he's there to stay because he's been driving. So he was sh driving in the fast lane right now, but now just smack in the middle um, in between two lanes with a three or four CHP officers behind him right now. Yeah, it, it, they, it, they definitely know they are being pursued. They just don't want to pull over. 
And uh, it is one of those wonderful moments where at least uh, the great, oh, I was just about no. to say the wrong thing. I was that just going to horrible. say, at least it looks like it's a light flow of traffic. Oh, no, my these goodness. poor drivers, um, and they clearly have somewhere to get to. You, you don't want to go on this artery if you don't have somewhere to get to. But and we know how like Thursday afternoon traffic is even get worse away. than Friday it, sometimes, it, especially through there. My goodness. And you always worry about people if they don't have enough gas. You don't, you know, these, these trucks are gas guzzlers, I would assume, but um, you, you don't know how many miles they can get, being that they are long haul, you know, they, they do uh, support long haul, haul trips. Mm -hmm. But um, Again, we're watching this slow speed pursuit. You can see we're, it's on uh, the, the I-5 right there. And, uh, oh, look at that right there. That's the best thing about Sky Map 7. So they, they might get have engaged. some sort of strip set up. Yep, there you see the spike strips there along the freeway and the officers waiting there. And so hopefully he will not see these spike strips and just come to a stop or just drive right over them. Uh, he doesn't have much choice. Uh, we'll see what happens up here in about another 100 yards. Apologize for that picture, but we'll, we'll get it right back in to focus there. Yeah, again, it just as we take a kind of a closer look and you can see the rear of this uh, this cab, but uh, um, but yeah, as we continue to follow this slow speed pursuit that's taking place, it, again, it originated. Oh, and out here he is approaching the spike strips. Oh, let's see if he can, oh, can somehow, he maneuver nope, it. he's no. going right over it with his, at least the right side of his tires and dragging it oh let's hope this did something i don't know how it couldn't do but you know again those are big thick tires but they did they did look like industrial size spike strips they as did. well I, <laughs> they have the the big guns out there the big spike strips that is um, going to be interesting to see if his tire starts to give out there in the front especially no kidding because he's driving slow enough to begin with yeah, but and, I'm looking uh, at that this front is tire, down Ellen, even more. look at that front uh, passenger it? tire. It actually, I'm thinking oh, it looks like it's getting it deflated. It does a little that bit, front, doesn't it? The front, uh, Yes, yeah. I think it, it actually is, which... It would look, it would be wonderful if this uh, would actually uh, pull yeah. the car, yeah. the cab over. It's a little encouraging to see that it did go over that spike strip because this is going to be um, a long afternoon for all those people trying to get where they're going on that five freeway, which is already a nightmare on, on the best of days. No, and again, we're talking about why would somebody want to steal a cab? It doesn't have any sort of merchandise. You always think of a mm -hmm. heist, like one of right. those movies as a heist where you steal mm -hmm. you steal the, the big rig with its merchandise and you take off. But this one, they have absolutely no merchandise attached to it. And also the question is, where does he think he's going and how far is he going to get? You know, that's what's so crazy about the whole thing. But it looks like he wants to really make a hard statement to... as well with, mm -hmm. you know, writing out the, uh, whatever mm -hmm message on a sharpie and yeah. trying to put it into the the front windshield so of course we haven't been able to see what that person's been trying to communicate yeah lost our signal temporarily but we are um, through the grapevine sometimes it can be a little tricky there but um, we'll get it back yep definitely Colleen you're right that tire is definitely low and it's going to be on those rims pretty soon and nope. that's certainly going to slow him down if it if it can even move yeah that's... oh well we have Gabe Santos who's up in air seven uh, with a bird's eye view and what do you know Gabe Hey, Colleen, Ellen, good to be with you guys up here in Air 7. Uh, we've been monitoring this big rig pursuit. Uh, well, we first heard about it coming out of Kern Valley. We understand Kern, uh, Kern County, excuse me, Kern County Sheriff's Department initiated this pursuit of this stolen big rig. And then uh, you've been watching our, uh, our uh, coverage from our news copter 7, our second news helicopter, uh, taking it over the grapevine and now up towards Castaic. We're still about five miles north of Castaic now. And you saw CHP had spike strips. Oh, oh, and there goes the front right tire. The front right tire has completely fallen off the vehicle. And this is going to be a big steering challenge for this driver for this driver as we maneuver Air 7 around from the driver's side, now back to the passenger side to see what's going on there. Now we saw CHP, uh, they deployed spike strips across all four lanes of this five freeway. And you guys have been talking about the traffic. The traffic on the southbound five is backed up almost all the way to the 138. The northbound side, not too badly affected right now because you can't really see the other side, uh, the side coming at you from the northbound side of the five. 
So the northbound side's moving around, moving uh, forward quite well. It's just that southbound side that's affected as this big rig pursuit continues southbound at, uh, on the five freeway. As we maneuver Air 7 around, we can see that white piece of paper uh, that the driver is holding up against the windshield and that tire that's completely fallen off the tire. Now, we were able to get a closer Ooh, look whoa, at that white that. piece of paper. Yeah, look at that. That's look at that. The tire. See, yeah. The tire completely off, the wheel there onto the brake rotors, and you can see pieces there flying off. That that brake rotor is going to just disintegrate, and we're going to eventually see sparks, we're going to see smoke, and I wouldn't be surprised if this eventually catches fire. Now, that white piece of paper that the driver has been trying to show us, yeah. we were able to zoom in earlier, and we can't see that it says anything. Hmm. It looks blank from well, our did perspective. Write something. We, we saw him yeah. with a pen, so we definitely wrote yeah, something on it. Frantically writing something. Um, if, if he did, he needs to use some darker ink, because yeah. we definitely, we're, we're yeah. not able to see it from up here. And you can see here the driver maneuvering around, uh, looking, as you guys just said, maybe he has a pen in hand now, and he's about to start writing something again. But this is just very difficult. Uh, uh, trying to control a big rig without its oh. front right tire and still trying to write something. You can see now it looks like smoke that could just possibly be uh, bits and pieces of that brake rotor just, just flying off of that wheel right now. And uh, that tire is oh. just going along there for the ride. Uh, you have the fuel tank right behind it, which could also be a concern if this mm. thing actually does mm. catch fire. And uh, speaking of the fuel tank, these things have very large tanks. So even though this came out of Kern County, this thing could go for, especially at these slow speeds for quite a bit more uh, in time. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, I, Colleen, you were saying, you know, the poor owner of this uh, cab, you know, it's oh, like to no. watch this. And I, it's just... It's heartbreaking. I, I, I only know sound. how hard it was for my little brother to get one of these mm. cabs and the loan and the, how expensive these are. And it really is your livelihood where you have to pick up and transport things. And it and it's a lot of freelancers. It's not as though they have a... It's a regular, you know, employer. They the, This is something that, you know, they are self-employed mm. and these trucks trucks are the, their only way of making money. I know that, you know, a lot of things are transported. We keep talking about how, uh, you know, transportation and big rig drivers are in such demand. But again, I can only imagine how tough it is for the owner of this cab to see his or her cab take somebody taking it yeah. on a ride like this because they treat these like babies you know it, they, they really have to maintain them they really have to keep them clean because this is also their housing unit as well because right behind the driver is their sort of bunk bed and their living area mm -hmm. because they many times they sleep in these as well they don't go to hotels they just pull over and they sleep in these in the rest stop areas so again this is this is hard to see because these are just so many thousands and thousands of dollars as we were watching this guy go south down on the five and holding up all the traffic behind him completely stopped. Um, you're wondering about this tire. I'm looking at it. It literally looks like it could catch fire, but it's just hard to say. It could I just be it going so slow. Too, and can you imagine Ellen? the sound that's making for this guy? And I mean, it's got to be ear shattering. Colleen and Ellen, as uh, Rob, our photographer, zooms in really tight mm -hmm. on that tire, you do see smoke starting to come mm -hmm. up from it. Uh, definitely that tire is heating up, just being rubbed across the pavement. However, that appears to be the only tire that was affected by those Gosh. spike strips. The tires in the back, and uh, from what we can tell, That's oh, there and there it goes. goes, there it goes, the tire's gone. Mm -hmm. So that possibility for fire... Uh, we're clear from that for now. That tire's off, and uh, at least that tire catching fire, that's not something we have to worry about. The next thing we're going to have to worry about is the wear and tear on the wheel itself and possibly the brake rotors as that starts digging into the roadway surface. And you can kind of see it uh, right under it's that wheel. You can see it drawing mm -hmm. a white line into the roadway surface. So it's definitely grinding, and they're pretty good making this uh, big rig uh, truck Ooh. or this big rig cab very hard to control. And uh, we're still only about uh, 10 or 15 miles an hour here, continuing this very so slow speed pursuit, still a few miles north of Castaic, and still, because of those slow speeds, affecting traffic on that ah. southbound five. Like I said, it's backed up all the way to the 138. He was already oh. going slow. Now he's barely moving. And it, you, what, how much weight is on that one wheel? You know, it can't, be, it can't last too long. No. I don't know how long you can. It's. I don't know how long you can run on this, but you can see all. There are so many tires on this, uh, but Gabe, I don't know much about big rigs, uh, but there are only two tires up in front. Correct. There's not like there's a tire. There's there's only two. There's not two parallel. Correct. 
Yeah, from my understanding, you just have the two, uh, the two parallel tires, the the right and the left side there, and it's those uh, those axles on the rear that have you know one, two, three, four tires per axle. So you have uh, eight tires there in the back and just the two in the front. So this this cab could, in theory, continue propelling itself in a straight line. It's just when it comes to making left and right turns, this driver is going to be very uh, strongly incapacitated. And let's see, we're seeing some spokes yeah. now come out of the driver's side. So I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if that tire is also being impacted. And this uh, this driver's Ooh. now, is oh. he pulling over onto yeah. the left side? He might be. Oh, he he might be pulling control. over now or just slowing down. Or he could just be struggling to control it as he's now possibly losing that driver's side tire, the right side tire, completely gone. Yeah, as he's busy trying to steer and maneuver and write notes at the yeah. same time, but yeah, you can see it really wobbling now. I, I, really, really like wobbling a lot here. We're gonna try and move Air 7 around. The track. To, to get a better vantage point on the driver's side, of course. Uh, but again, we're watching this driver. It looks like they've actually slowed yep, there down There he is with the note again. There he is, but uh, you know, you, you do wanna, you do kinda wanna know what are they trying to say because they're not going very fast. It's certainly not a, We've seen high-speed chases, and this is certainly not one of them. But we mm -hmm. see a lot of smoke being produced on that uh, passenger side as well, Gabe. I don't know if it's just yeah. because of the tire, but a lot of smoke on that other side. I think that's actually the wind blowing the smoke from this driver's side tire. You can see there the smoke coming out of it, and that and that smoke is being wafted up onto the uh, onto the passenger side, and that's where you see it actually coming out. But this tire, this front tire, completely locked up. It's not even spinning. Oh, you're I don't right. even see the tire there. Oh. I don't see the rubber. It looks like okay, okay. If uh, just in a little bit of the dark uh, spot of the picture there, you can see where the rubber actually remains as oh, Rob pushes flames. in the camera. You can see the tread of the tires right there being held up, and you can see now sparks being created. Yep. Because that, that rim isn't even turning uh -oh. anymore, sparks are coming up, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see flames pretty soon here. And that's where you see that smoke. Yeah. That's why we're seeing that smoke. A very dangerous situation. These cabs carry a lot of fuel, and that could all go up in flames if this guy doesn't come to a stop pretty quickly. Here. I wow, just really wish yes. they would, because they're probably very, they're probably unaware of the hazard that is right directly below them. And you it, can see where it's melted that rim down a bit. You can, where it's it grinded kind of down flat. to it. Yeah, it looks. Like, but you see those sparks, and that is very concerning, especially Gabe, when you're talking about how much fuel these uh, cabs can carry. Of course, I didn't realize that when you were showing. Oh, oh my goodness! Oh, there we go. We saw some out. flames. That's not and a good that, sight. And that that tire, the rubber, is still jammed up into the wheel well there. So that can potentially oh. be something that can catch fire and help light uh, at least a part of this cab on fire. This driver really needs to slow it down, bring it to a stop, and get out. And you were right, guys. Like, he may not even be aware that he now has fire just a few feet away from him. He might be smelling the smoke, but the driver may not be aware that uh, that it's actually burning. You can mm -hmm. see there sparks and, uh, and a couple of flames every now and then uh, as the uh, sparks Sparks get a puff of a uh, of a uh, of a uh, fuel there, and uh, up into the uh, the uh, rubber of the tire, you'll 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 see some flames every now and then in a very dangerous situation. As uh, you were pointing out, the 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 rim itself is now grinding mm -hmm. all the way through. It is no longer Ooh. round. It no. has a flat surface. And now you can see we're slowing down a little bit more, but this driver still very adamant to keep his foot on the gas pedal and continue on forward. Yeah, this and Gabe, I, again, th this is because we're on a, such a, an extreme close-up of this cab, but the terrain of the grapevine, as many of us know, it closes down if there's any slight dusting of snow because it is a pretty treacherous uh -oh. drive of the up and down and, oh, this is this scary. Is a, there we go. This, this is, is not good, Gabe. This is very Flames concerning. Flames and yeah. black smoke now coming from the wheel well. And as you were saying, Colleen, as we continue to watch the flames here, uh, mm. yeah, we're definitely on the downward side oh. of uh, of these mountains coming uh, southbound from the grapevine. It's a downhill slope. It's a pretty steep slope. It is. Uh, yeah. You'll 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 see a lot of uh, of uh, turnout points mm -hmm. for big rigs to use if oh, they boy. have brake problems. And you can imagine. I don't think uh, this driver's brakes. Oh, there he is trying to signal something to us. Trying to tell us, you to look to at his note. Yeah, yeah, trying, yeah, to, trying to point us oh, to the boy. note, but, Dude, but look unfortunately, look at your smoky cab. How about that? Yeah. Maybe he can't drive. Stop. Let you know. Never wow. know. Maybe the brakes are locked up. Maybe he can't drive. I'm always trying to figure out. Maybe there's something. There's there's something that's causing them great distress that they can't seem to pull over. 
but now and he now sees his hood. It seems like he's using his shirt to try and cover his mouth oh, from the well, smoke, and there it is, more flames. Passenger. I mean, it, it's in the cab now. Yeah, well, it looks like they stopped, which is good. Yep. So the brakes yep. seem we've, to be working. <laughs> we've, we've come to a stop, but that tire that was wedged under the wheel well there is now completely He's engulfed in flames, okay, and that's okay. only going to help burn the rest of the cab. And well, there he is, is, the driver, good. hands up, stepping out of the vehicle, down onto the pavement. This is a very good sign, okay, and this might have been the only way to bring this thing to a stop was those spike strips actually causing uh, this uh, cab to set fire there. You can see there, CHP moving in, a K9 unit also moving into position. This uh, driver backing up, hands in the air. It looks like he's cooperating. That's a very good sign there, slowly backing up. He's not carrying that white piece of paper that he was so adamant uh, getting us to see earlier. So uh, there'll be questions after this as to what, what that said, what he was trying to tell us. And you can see now, this cab is going to go up in flames because it has uh, it has a lot oh. burning under there, and that's going to catch really quickly. Have that's a suspect. Go ahead. Oh, have you seen a fire engine um, approaching? Uh, looking out the helicopter window, we don't see a fire engine as of yet. If the, if they try and Boy, come from the wind. north, they're going to have to deal with a lot of traffic. I'm being told by our assignment oh, desk, CHP just made the call for fire crews, and I imagine that's going to be LA County fire coming from the LA area, because if they try and come from Kern County, they're going to have to deal with a lot of traffic. And you can see there, that K-9 unit really excited there, trying to uh, do his job, and the CHP officer now taking that suspect into custody. The handcuffs going on, uh, one officer doing a quick search of the waistband, and there we go. This is about the best way we can hope for this pursuit to come to an end, that suspect being in, taken into custody, and now this big rig cab becoming fully engulfed in flames, and this is only going to become a major traffic issue if you're coming southbound from Kern County. This this cab is in the middle of the five southbound, and uh, you have a lot of winds here in the area. Mm -hmm. That's going to blow the smoke uh, mm -hmm. across possibly into the northbound lanes um, as oh, well. It's, it's, it's not windy enough, and there's not enough brush around that I feel like it's a threat to the brush, That's but good. definitely this is going to be uh, something that will require a lot of cleanup, and hopefully fire gets here uh, very quickly quickly as we see that cab continue to be engulfed by flames and now uh, that suspect being taken into custody and we're hearing a code four from CHP. Well, thankfully, there, it looks pretty barren around there. So if, there's, if there was a lot of brush around, they'd be really worried about that. But thankfully, that area seems to be not too ve much uh, vegetation around there. Thank goodness. But that is that went up very quickly very quickly and producing so much smoke and you know again at least as of right now let's hope that there's no sort of fire danger that's associated with this burning cab but again you can see we're going to take a good look at the i-5 mm. south of the grapevine you can see all those drivers at a complete stop a freeway shut down right there but again hopefully they'll be able to extinguish those flames pretty quickly and let these drivers get on their way what's too bad too is that he stopped in the middle of the freeway so they're gonna have to clear that out too before these cars can get past and yeah, so you know Colleen, over to the edge Colleen Ellen that's a that's a double-edged sword it's a good thing he stopped in the middle of the lanes because mm -hmm. that limits the threat to a brush fire it looks like the flames are going to be kept a good distance from the brush uh, although with the winds the way they are you're always concerned about embers blowing anything into that uh, brushy area uh, we know that fire crews have been called to the scene here uh, but yeah because the cab stopped in the middle of the lanes that's going to take a while to get cleaned mm -hmm. up even once the fire is out you're going to have that 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 uh, skeleton of a cab, if you will, uh, just sitting there waiting to be cleaned up. And this is gonna be a major traffic mess as we get into the evening rush hour commute on your Thursday afternoon. I can imagine. Is the northbound freeway, are they slowing down to take a look? Is that? Uh, as I look out the window, this is an area um, oh, as you I go see. north from Castaic, where the freeways are mm -hmm. split up by a pretty good distance. I would say yeah. drivers coming northbound can definitely see the smoke, but it's not, uh, they're not close enough to be concerned about it, I would say. So northbound lanes still flowing pretty smoothly. Uh, that's about, uh, that's the that's, positive. That's yeah. the good news here. That's the, good the only news. positive I just in know this whole that thing. This, this area, as many of us have driven this area before, it's long, it's already tedious on the best of days. Mm. To have this is causing major problems. At 323 in the afternoon, where they have been stopped for quite some time. You know, they do have, the, Gabe, when you when you pull out a little bit, they, there, there are those roads that are adjacent to the five uh, south, but I'm not sure if they're going to be able to be directed you know, rerouted onto, the, yeah. you need to have like an all-terrain vehicle to pop over that, I'm sure. 
Right, looking to where the traffic is stopped, there's really no way for a lot of these people to get uh, from this side to the other there. It looks to be there's a fire road up right where that traffic is stopped up ahead and maybe they can get these uh, vehicles turned around and headed north again. I think that would be the best case scenario, but there's really no easy option for drivers to continue south. Uh, there's no there's no exits in this area and there's no real fire roads to get you to the south, but there on the left of your screen is the fire road that I would imagine uh, CHP officers will start directing drivers to make that U-turn and start heading north again, oh. and then you're going to have oh, to yeah. uh, take those long, windy back roads to either take the 14 back down to LA or go around and take the 101 over towards uh, Santa Barbara. Just a nightmare. Right. Look at all those big rigs on the five as well. Yeah, oh. that's going to be a long afternoon, and hopefully a fire engine will get there soon. I haven't seen any sight of one, but that would be certainly helpful and, and expedite this cleanup procedure that they I have know. to that they have in store heart, for them. Your heart goes We're out gonna, to those drivers. I think we're going to see this cab uh, just become a complete loss. It, oh, a it's shame. already a yeah. complete loss, but uh, where we are, a little bit of a remote area, it's going to take fire crews a bit, um, a few minutes uh, at the very least to get up here. So we're going to see that cab just become completely destroyed, I think, before fire crews can actually arrive here. Uh, I'm looking uh, behind us in uh, Air Ooh. 7 in the in the south direction, and I don't see anybody uh, even close to uh, this area, at least heading in this direction. Uh, so we're going to stay on this cab and just uh, watch the uh, uh, consequences of what happened here. When you uh, run over spike strips, when you grind down the wheels down to sparks, and your cab catches fire, this is what can happen. It's uh, it's uh, quite the sight, I will yeah, say. A lot Again, of fuel there. I keep, th I just keep feeling so sorry for the family behind this, yeah. this, this cab because this is the livelihood of a family, and they're seeing all of this go up in flames. And I'm, I'm hoping they're properly insured, you know, because you're not going to be able to work for a while. You know, this is, is such far-reaching uh, consequences from somebody stealing your cab. Maybe you are inside somewhere getting a bite, and someone steals your cab, and now all of a sudden. You're, you know, it, it's a it's a chain reaction on this one. But this isn't just someone stealing someone's car. Mm -hmm. This is someone stealing someone's livelihood and um, an expensive one. These, you know, they they sort of pay for themselves because of tra traps. Uh, spike strips. Oh, we're going to take a look at uh, when when this all sort of started falling apart for this uh, driver. You see those three sets of spike strips, and he did try to avoid it, and then he got a direct. They know what they're doing. The CHP. They certainly do. And this was after uh, one failed before. So thankfully, this one, uh, this last one, obviously did the trick. Um, but that uh, tire eventually fell off the wheel but was stuck underneath the cab and dragging for a couple miles. And uh, there, I think, there, there you saw a little bit ago. Little bit ago um, we were showing you that. Yeah. And uh, Colleen and Ellen, I just want to point out uh, the winds that we're seeing up here, uh, they are they're they're blowing at a, at a at a pretty good bit here so mm. much so that you're seeing those flames almost blowing sideways off of this cab almost laying up against mm -hmm. uh, the pavement of the freeway surface and that makes me a little bit concerned about embers there blowing onto the brush luckily it's uh, it's what they call light flashy fuels light flashy brush that's how the fire department refers to it as so if it does get to the brush uh, I don't see the potential for um, a major fire being started here due to this fire but it is is definitely a concern and it is something that CHP is looking out for. You've noticed CHP didn't approach this vehicle and they didn't do their normal procedures when they actually clear the vehicle after a pursuit and that's because it was already on fire and because it is a danger to them. Now as you see the flames working their way towards the back cab of the vehicle, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of uh, concerned about the fuel tanks. I don't think the fire has quite made it there yet Ooh, and yeah, uh, we're uh, receiving a little bit more information from our assignment desk now. Oh, okay. Well, again, you're you're talking about that, Gabe. As you started to uh, take a look at the at the uh, notes that are being given to you on this breaking news. As we know, with breaking news, we are, we're getting information the whole time while we're on the air. So um, that's the good thing about having all three of us here uh, following this, because one of us can talk while the other one's reading. But Gabe, what, did you find out anything about this driver? What they were trying to uh, what they were trying to communicate with us? 
Uh, we're still efforting uh, further information on that. CHP's concern right now is just to uh, take the driver into custody and make sure that he's not going to be any more of a danger to them or himself. Uh, we do understand that Kern County, uh, the department that uh, initially started this pursuit, they're on their way here to uh, bring that suspect back to Kern County. So definitely a suspect and a uh, crime that they are interested in, uh, in uh, solving. They're going to have a little bit of a rough time getting here due to that traffic coming in the southbound direction, um, but we do understand that that suspect is going to be on his way back to Kern County as we continue to watch this cab go up in flames and uh, the fire is just going to eat through the whole thing. I'm still, uh, let me uh, look back here, I still don't see any fire crews in route. We know they've been dispatched, but as we've said, this is kind of a, a remote area. As you approach uh, the grapevine, it's going to take a little bit of time for those crews to get out here, uh, and we're just going to see this, uh, this entire cab go up in flames. And you can see the powerful winds that are, like you said, blowing the flames almost to horizontal there, and that we just have to hope that there are no embers that will be carried, because sometimes those can, you know, carry for miles. So we'll have to see, uh, hopefully, that uh, it stays just in that particular area. No kidding. It's a little frightening to look at. It, it, it is frightening to see. Um, again, as we approach 3.30 right now, we've been live. Our live coverage, though, does not stop. Our breaking news continues on ABC7 on our streaming channel. And you can watch live on our website, on your phone, and on your connected TV, anywhere you stream ABC7 Los Angeles. Here on TV, we're going to turn things over to David Muir for World News Tonight. And we'll be back with you for Eyewitness News at 4 o'clock. But again, we're going to be streaming this on our uh, ABC7.com or on your ABC7 Los Angeles app for more of this breaking news of this big rig. It certainly came to a fiery end on the 5 freeway on the Great Vine. Four o'clock to do. Okay, be nice to... Thank you for joining us on ABC7.com and our streaming apps, live coverage of the, the termination to this uh, big rig cab pursuit that we've seen come to a fiery end here, not due to a crash or anything, but actually due to spike strips. Spike strips knocked down both front tires of this big rig uh, as the pursuit was coming over the break of uh, coming over the grapevine, excuse me, and uh, those tires actually caught fire uh, as they, you know, as the air just got out of them and uh, the tires came off, the rubber came off and the uh, rims just uh, grinded down and started sparking. And those sparks created uh, pretty much what you see here where this big rig is now on fire and fire crews now just getting on scene here. You can see them using some foam there. This is the first uh, the first fire crews that we've seen been able to get on scene. They actually had to come up from the north and take a fire road back down south, and uh, they're using a specialized foam instead of water to put this out because of uh, fuels and other chemicals that could be uh, involved here in the big rig. And just like that, with just that one uh, firefighter with that one hose, he's able to knock down the bulk of it. but you can see here this cab, it's gonna be a complete loss. This pursuit started in Kern County. Kern County Sheriff's uh, received a report of this stolen big rig cab and the pursuit then continued up over the grapevine. CHP took over the pursuit and uh, like I said, CHP was able to deploy spikes across the entirety of the southbound five freeway. This driver had nowhere to go and had to go over uh, pretty much all the tires on this cab had to go over every single one of those spikes. And what you saw was the left front and the right front tires eventually went completely flat. Those tires came off 
and the rims began to grind into the roadway surface. That started this fire that you see here right now. Uh, fortunately, that suspect realized that this cab was on fire and eventually stepped out of the cab, walked backwards towards officers with his hands up and went into custody peacefully. Kern County, we're being told, is either on scene now or they will be on scene momentarily. And they're gonna be taking that suspect back to Kern County to continue their investigation. That's uh, LA County fire, right? Yeah. And uh, LA County fire having to make the long drive up, uh, oh, I'd say we're a few miles south of the grapevine, a few miles north of Castaic, uh, a little bit, uh, I would say, of a remote area. And Gabe, now the question is, how long is it gonna take to um, get this truck off the road once the fire is put out? You know, it's, a, it's still a mess to clean up and the mop up's gonna take a while. So these people might be stuck there uh, or at least trying to make a, I guess, go back north. Um, you know, uh, do that U-turn. I think that just sounds so <laughs> cruel sounds to do, awful. to have to turn around. But yeah. Gabe, you showed us the, the, the sort of one road out that would lead them and it only goes to the northbound I-5. Yeah, Colleen, it's uh, an unfortunate set of events here if you were traveling southbound on the five. We haven't actually seen them begin to initiate that U-turn. They're just kind of holding traffic put for now. Uh, I'm curious to see if they think they can get the, uh, the rig actually cleared uh, enough uh, off of the roadway surface so that they can actually bring traffic down this way. Even if they do, I would imagine it's gonna take a few minutes because they, uh, you know, once the, once the cab starts burning, pieces start melding to the asphalt and uh, it becomes a bit of a, of, a, of a challenging cleanup operation. So if they were to open any lanes, I would imagine maybe one right lane, if that, uh, mm -hmm. But we're, we're, ju we're, we're just going to have to wait and see here what CHP uh, decides to do. I see a little bit of movement up where the uh, traffic uh, was brought to a stop. Uh, looks like maybe just one of the additional fire crews making their way down this way. And uh, as you can see, in just a few minutes here, LA County Fire able to put enough uh, water and foam on this, uh, on this cab to at least knock down all of the flames, but you can see here a lot of hot spots to work with. Nope. Uh, still, it's a it's a process, you know? Yeah, it certainly is, Gabe. And you know, we, we, we tend to watch these, you know, the commercial fires that take place inside of uh, tire yards and what have you. And we see how long it takes to put out the flames on certain plastics and certain materials. It's not as though it's it's a wood fire where it seems like sometimes those those flames can uh, kind of be doused pretty quickly. But this, this, this is producing so much smoke. Of course, you can't see the flames, so I guess it's a, somewhat of a positive sign. You don't see quite such the, the rich black plume of smoke uh, pouring out from this cab. But again, it is... It is, it is a firefight for these, these uh, firefighters. Yeah, Colleen, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a few more minutes to get this thing fully knocked down. Uh, this is still kicking up a lot of that white smoke. Uh, no more black smoke, which is a good thing. And um, that limits the impact to the northbound 5 freeway because you don't have a lot of uh, at least that uh, visual distraction that uh, people going in the northbound direction might have. Um, as I look out the window, I can see the uh, northbound lanes are moving along pretty smoothly. And uh, we actually, oddly enough, it looks like uh, we have have one of the big rig tow trucks that uh, might be arriving on scene here momentarily. So that is definitely good news. Um, That's once, incredible. Once fire crews actually get this thing knocked down, at least we have the towing apparatus on scene, if you will, to hopefully get the truck moved out of the way as quickly as possible as they're still holding those southbound lanes to a dead stop. No kidding. And, and the, so that looks like, you know, it looks like that is a sort of, oh, there's the big rig tow truck. Incredible to see it arrive so quickly because anybody knows when they, when their car breaks down the side of the road, you can be there for a long time. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so this That's is, so yeah. true. this is wonderful. Colleen, I, I, w I would imagine the, uh, the uh, slope, the snow plow, excuse me, might actually be used to clear debris from the lanes oh. after the tow truck actually pulls the, uh, this, this hulk of metal that was the cab after the tow truck pulls that out of the way, then the snow plow will probably be used to scrape any debris off the lanes so they can get uh, all of these lanes cleared out as soon as possible. Hopefully, uh, you know, before the evening commute actually gets really underway here as we get into the five or six o'clock hour.
All right, well, we're talking, we're watching this, uh, Gabe. Again, we're watching all the smoke pour out from this cab. We see the firefighters just right there in the thick of all that smoke, trying to get control of it and trying to put it out uh, as easily as possible. But again, this is, this is, this is definitely taking a while. Uh, Gabe, again, you know, we were talking about the different types of materials and about how challenging it is for these firefighters just to get this completely uh, knocked out. Yeah, that's that's uh, going to be a challenge for sure. Uh, we've already been saying it looks like that uh, firefighter that's actively spraying water onto uh, the cab right now, uh, that's just water. But we saw the first crew that arrived on scene was actually spraying a foam, which is um, a chemical specially designed to knock down fires like this. Uh, so it was good to see that the uh, first crew that arrived on scene here actually had that ready and available, and they were able to knock this, uh, at least the uh, flames part of this car fire out, or cab fire, if you will, out in pretty quick order. And uh, just another thing to mention, Justin, my uh, pilot uh, is mentioning now that it looks like they've opened Templin Highway, which is a little bit to the north of where the freeway is actually closed. So anybody stuck in traffic uh, a little further back, they're able to actually take Templin Highway, and there's another side road that has now been opened up to traffic. Uh, let me see if I can get it here. That's going to be Ridge Right Road. That comes off of Templin Highway, and that's allowing some traffic, at least, to proceed southbound. So we still have that traffic that's being held there that is kind of stuck. They may have to make that U-turn uh, to get on their way, but at least traffic that's further back, they're being allowed onto Templin Highway, onto Ridge Right Road, I believe it's called, uh, to continue southbound. Well, that's a good thing to see for these drivers. And, it, and again, uh, I, I feel like the later, obviously, it gets, the worse the, the commute uh, becomes. But right now, even when we're looking at it right now, there are, there are a ton of cars stacked up. But it seems like that congestion will ease pretty quickly. Yeah, uh, what would hope, um, a correction here, that's actually Ridge Route Road, excuse me, Ridge Route Road. And this is in the area where we saw the uh, those uh, a couple of fires back a few months ago where the uh, freeway was actually damaged for a time and you had a number of uh, um, construction crews actually working to repair a part of the highway that was damaged by those fires, uh, those brush fires a couple months ago, just to give you a better idea of where we are. Uh, so still looking at the traffic further ahead coming southbound. Uh, CHP still holding the bulk of it, but as we said, a lot of those people are able to get onto Templin Highway, and hopefully once uh, once that bulk of traffic that's being held is released, uh, hopefully that shouldn't take too, uh, too much longer to get uh, cleared up. You will see some residual slowing in the area, but uh, otherwise, once they get this cab out of the way, that's when traffic will hopefully clear up uh, in pretty quick order here. It's just a matter of how quickly can they do that and how quickly can they get this cab either towed away or towed off to the side of the road. Thankfully, they have a couple hours of uh, daylight left. That's uh, fortunate because I can't imagine this happening as the evening settles and people are trying to get to their pl place or their destination. So that is good news. Yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely better to have this during the day, uh, especially for us. This is in an area that's a little too far north to cover pursuits at night uh, because this uh, this part of the mountainside as you go up into the grapevine becomes a little too dark for us to fly at night. We usually can only fly over where we can see city lights just to give you a little behind the scenes information there. But yeah. during the day, we can definitely fly up here. CHP can definitely fly up here and they can keep better track of uh, where the uh, 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 suspect goes and what's going on as far as uh, what was catching on fire on the suspect vehicle. CHP had their helicopter on scene here and that helicopter uh, uh, officer, an officer on board that helicopter was actually able to relay that information to the CHP units on the ground, uh, telling them exactly what was catching fire and what kind of approach uh, they needed to take as this pursuit was coming to an end. But luckily, the suspect made the right decision, was realizing when that uh, thick black smoke from the undercarriage there became just too much, he was smart and brought it to a stop and got out and turned himself in. So about uh, about as best scenario as we can hope for an end to this pursuit uh, has happened here today. As you can see here, LA County fire crews uh, really getting in there and trying to get all those hot spots out, and there's going to be a lot of them. It's going to take a little bit of time. You can see here a lot of steam coming up from the cab, 
Uh, and uh, it's just gonna it's just gonna be a very methodical procedure that fire crews work through uh, before they can actually get this cab on the move or what remains of it. Yeah, you see that engine. If that that looks like what was the engine right there? What in the was front. the engine? <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, that's still really producing a lot of smoke, but something in that cab is really. Uh, it's a very stubborn firefight inside there to try to get it cool enough and get those get the smoke just done. Yeah, uh, Colleen, as you mentioned, that's probably uh, living quarters back there, and I wouldn't be surprised if there were any amounts of uh, blankets, clothing, things no. like that that tends to uh, burn for a while, especially if it's if, it, if it's a large pile of something like that. And that's probably what they're working on back there, if not just the frame of the cab itself. Uh, you know, we saw this whole thing engulfed in flames, uh, some very hot flames at that, uh, probably burning every every uh, piece and component of this cab uh, that those flames actually touched. Uh, but, you know, as the minutes go by, we're starting to see less and less of that smoke and that steam and mm -hmm. fire crews now kind of taking a more calm approach, just kind of looking around, seeing what they uh, need to do next uh, and just um, evaluating if they need to put more water on it uh, or what the next step should be in this firefight. Uh, we're taking Air 7 around on the west side of this uh, of the scene here just to see what the damage is. Oh. on uh, that side. Uh, and you can see there's some water coming out uh, of the cab. Mm. That's probably some water that the, that the fire crews were actually spraying uh, onto the fire itself. And uh, looking at it out the helicopter window, you can barely see any smoke at all. You can only really see it when we're up on this tight shot. So fire crews doing an amazing job uh, knocking this uh, tractor trailer cab fire out. Some high winds in the area. Um, but the fire crews, like we said, were able to get here before those flames on the cab were able to make it to any of the brush in the area. So that's definitely some good news here. And hopefully pretty soon, you know, uh, this cleanup process is well underway and we'll be able to see them open up the freeway pretty soon. Once again, the southbound lanes, all lanes of the southbound 5 freeway are currently closed just south of Templin Highway. And if you're coming from the north of Templin Highway, you should be able to take Templin Highway and then use Ridge Route Road to get around this. Um, although expect, certainly expect um, delays, delays uh, in upwards of at least an hour, if not two, mm -hmm. to get around this if you're coming from Kern County down to the L.A. area. No doubt about Also it. good to note that uh, there were no wildfire spark from this, because that could have been a disaster. That's but what I was, yeah, that was and, the big concern, the, too. Exactly, and the area around there was very barren. It looked like it already had survived a fire from the looks of it. So that is fortunate that uh, this could have been a disaster. This um, must be producing, yeah. though, Ellen, some real, and, and Gabe, some pretty toxic fumes oh, because can you imagine. can see the firefighters, they all have um, a mask on because, like, you might see this person who just joined, but all the other firefighters, once they come, then they, they put that mask on because it must really be producing quite a bit of um, toxic fumes coming from that uh, big rig. But yeah, Gabe, you can see it. It's, it's really close to being out, and you can see the cavity of that cab, which is uh, totally gone. Yeah, complete loss on the inside, and you're exactly right, Colleen and Ellen. These uh, fire crews, once they get in there pretty close, they definitely have all their uh, breathing, uh, uh, protective breathing devices on there so they can uh, breathe a fresh supply of oxygen and not have to take in any other uh, chemicals or any other fumes that might be coming off of the uh, carcass of this cab. And uh, as you were saying, also, if we, if we widen out the shot, we'll be able to see the area around this cab that luckily was a previous burn only a few months ago. This area did burn, uh, and you can see to the left of the shot that's going to be in the west direction, kind of where that water's flowing downhill. That's where the smoke and the embers were blowing, and that's right into uh, a part of the terrain there that has already burned. So that's definitely some good news there. Uh, if that had not happened, if those fires had not happened a few months ago, I would be very curious to see if we didn't actually see a brush fire spark off here today due to this cab fire. Yeah, absolutely, Gabe, and that's what I was thinking when we were watching, um, when we were watching this cab and we saw it go down to the rims and we saw the sparks coming. I thought, oh no, the last thing we need right now, because if you've been outside, you know it is very windy. But now we're taking some uh, earlier images of when the suspect did, uh, those flames forced that suspect to get out of the get out of the cab, not the pursuit. It, once they saw that their, the cab was on fire, again, this is a, a report of a stolen uh, big rig cab. So that suspect allegedly stole this big rig. 
But once uh, he saw the flames, that's when he stopped that big rig, got out, and and um, and he was taken into a really sort of peaceful uh, surrender to the CHP, which was good to see. You know, we know he was trying to communicate with, you know, with you and with other helicopters. I don't know if it was the CHP helicopter as well, but trying to communicate something. We never got to see what it was, but you would think if one is going to take a cab, steal a cab possibly, or try to communicate with somebody, they're trying, they're, they're trying to get some message out. We just don't know what it was. Yeah, guys, uh, you know, zooming in very close on that sign that the driver was holding, we couldn't really make out anything. Uh, you know, if, if, if that driver would have used um, a different kind of pen, you know, maybe that would have helped. And we still don't know at this hour what that sign was, what he was trying to show us. And mm -hmm. it could have very, very well be uh, destroyed by fire at this point. You know, fire crews certainly have taken a look at it. You see one uh, CHP officer trying to get a get a uh, close look that's uh, I think that's the first CHP officer to make a close pass of this cab and uh, really uh, the investigation can't begin until it's safe for investigators to get in close to the cab and look inside see if they can find the remnants of that sign maybe it hasn't burnt completely uh, and maybe they can see what in fact that uh, uh, driver was trying to tell us yeah you just you just never know people are why someone would steal a uh something like that, you would think it would be a crime of opportunity would be a car that you can certainly whiz around, not a, a semi where you're going nine miles an hour uh, up the grapevine. So it, it's just kind of interesting. But again, um, we have been following this chase for quite some time, uh, about an hour now, uh, Gabe, and um, we did see it come to an end. We're going to be wrapping up our streaming um, live coverage in just a few moments. But again, uh, Gabe, thank you very much for getting out there so quickly in Air 7 H to give us a bird's eye view of this. Yep, thanks guys. All right, well, stay tuned. We're going to have all the latest details on Eyewitness News at 4 o'clock in just about 10 minutes from now.
This is Eyewitness News with live breaking news. Breaking news at four, stolen big rig goes up in flames following a bizarre slow speed pursuit. I'm Ellen Leva. And I'm David Ono. Gabe Santos is an Air 7 HD live over the 5 freeway in Castaic where traffic has come to a standstill, Gabe. Yeah, David Ellen, take a look at this. Uh, this is the end of that pursuit we were following during our three o'clock hour. You can see here a complete loss. The cab caught fire, and uh, now crews are working on the cleanup here. You can see they've dug up a little bit of a berm here to try and steer some of those engine liquids and oils off into the side and prevent it from going downhill uh, to the other side of the freeway. Uh, let's take a look at some video from earlier in that pursuit. Uh, this came out of Kern County, uh, wanted for uh, a suspected stolen vehicle uh, now we're looking at uh, the uh, tire well that's on fire uh, because eventually those uh, the uh, excuse me eventually CHP eventually deployed spike strips and that caused two of the tires on this vehicle to go flat and eventually caught fire that suspect eventually got smart and pulled over to the left side of the freeway coming to a stop eventually that uh, entire cab caught fire and CHP took the suspect into custody peacefully now back live we're looking at uh, the traffic that is still uh, at a complete stop. This is the southbound 5 freeway just south of Templin Highway, and you're not going to be able to get through here for quite some time as fire crews work to clean up the remnants of that big rig, and uh, you're you're going to have to use some extra time if you're coming southbound from Kern County into L.A. County. Try and use the 138 to the 14 or over to the 101 through Santa Barbara. Live in Air 7 HD, Gabe Santos, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Gabe, thank you very much. A shocking story out of Burbank where police officers rescued three young children from an apartment fire after hearing them screaming for help. Police say their parents had locked them in a bedroom so they could walk to a store and that's where the apartment went up in flames. And now it is news reporter Christian Cordero is live outside the apartment building with details and reaction from neighbors. Christian. Yeah, David Ellen, this is the apartment complex right behind me. Police say those three children are all under the age of seven and they were in one of those units when the fire broke out calling for help, police say, and no one was home. Just after 2 a.m. Wednesday, this northern Burbank community got up to an alarm more consequential than most. Their building was on fire. Uh, I remember being woken up by the police and the fire department in my house uh, telling me to get out, um, get some clothes, and grab anything important to me. So I rushed to grab some legal documents and my cat. Spencer Mary lives just a few steps away from the unit where the fire started. He said he looked out his bedroom and saw a thick plume of black smoke, as did the officers first to respond. But despite what they saw and smelled, Sergeant Brent Feckety tells us the priority quickly became what they heard. 